Fei Chong, Northwest artist and instructor, is going to show us how he paints a watercolor using Chinese ink, mounted rice paper, Chinese brushes, and regular watercolors. The method of mounting the rice paper shown here is with a photographic dry mounting tissue. The tissue is placed over the cardboard backing. Next is the rice paper, then a protective sheet of newsprint. The heat from the hot iron, which is passed over the entire surface, melts the mounting tissue and causes the rice paper to adhere to the cardboard. The scene selected is James Island near La Puss in the state of Washington. A rectangular viewfinder helps to compose the picture. Normally, this artist does not sketch with pencil first, but for this demonstration, an outline makes it easier for the viewer to follow. For the outline of the rocky island, the artist uses a small, round, pointed Chinese brush dipped in the Chinese ink. Yellow ochre mixed with Chinese ink is applied to the mountain with a flat, chisel-pointed brush. A little of the black ink mixed with the watercolors subdues the color and helps unify the composition. The scrim was erected for the photographer to serve as a filter just in case the sun should be too brilliant. lines are accentuated to bring out the form and the texture of these rocky cliffs. Hooker's green, mixed with ink, is used for the foliage color. Ultramarine blue, mixed with ink, is used for the ocean. Some of the white of the paper is left. This creates the wave effect. A wide brush dipped in clear water, wets the foreground before color is applied. This wash prevents harsh lines, and the colors also will blend more readily. Rice paper absorbs the paint. Therefore, colors will not come off when another wash is applied over them. Now back at the studio, the artist is going to add a few finishing touches. He writes the date and his name in Chinese. And applies his seal. All of these in the place he has left for them, for they too are an important part of the painting's composition. In its final form, the painting is a combination of both Oriental and Western techniques and materials.
Well, from the first, first of all, I think sports is such a great thing for any youth, and I think whether you're real good or not. And I just think the way I started, I it was a, I was a maniac. I had to have a ball in my hand, dribbling, no matter where I go, to the park all the time, and at the home, and everybody telling me to keep quiet. And even at the age of eight, I think I started going to the park at eight, and I probably stayed at the park every every hour, every minute until dark and shooting around. And I love the game so much, but I think it's because of the influence from my brothers who were real good in the sports. And they, they were the uh, double-A players and single-A players. And I, I revered them and I knew what team they belonged to. In fact, <clears throat> I used to go to Collins Playfield, which is in the central area. And we lived only a block away and I used to frequent and see their teams play. And I used to just enjoy watching, enjoy playing, and even when they're playing, you know, when there's a timeout, I'm the guy out there with the ball, shooting the basket, and the referee would say, get off the court, and, and I, I enjoyed that, and I think uh, it was part of my life, and I, I knew that it's the game I loved. When the war broke out, it was about, uh, I was 10, 11 by then, and so when you're talking about 13, 14, 15 and a half, and then in tournament camp, and, that's where I play basketball a lot because what else is there to, to, to do? You don't have movies and places to hang out. And so you're playing basketball. And the California Asians, that Japanese Americans who were in the camp with me in Tule Lake, California, there were 17,000 Japanese Americans there. And I think to see those guys play was a treat because they were so far ahead of us. And they were uh, of the Northwest Asians, supposedly, if you call it that. But uh, I learned so much from them. So after I came back to Seattle from camp, and, and I was a sophomore, and I enrolled as a junior at Garfield High School, and I felt, oh boy, I could be a varsity player, because I was a varsity as a sophomore. But I think the fear of racism, and, because you know, when you're out of camp and all you see is you know, your kind of people, then all of a sudden you see the white society and the white coaches and the white players, and I kind of held my own, but I didn't know how to deal with it, and I didn't know how to say, when am I going to get a break, or I could play better than that guy, how come he's playing, or I just sat quietly, and I think that was really tough for me, and, but I did play for the Kudo Drug basketball team, the community team, and that was sort of a life-saving experience, because the love of the game was my first goal, and I think if you want to play a game, do the best you can by getting into it. Maybe I was overdoing it, but I don't think so. I think it was good for my health. Uh so after I played the community ball and then finally got into teaching and got into coaching, I had a minor in t uh, uh, PE, major in arts and graphics. and. Uh, Basketball is such a big, big thing to me at the same time, but first of all, you have to make a choice. Are you going to be a good teacher or a good basketball coach? You, you would like to do those two. Well, I like to think I did because they were my first two loves. A lot of people don't get their first love or second love. They just get a job and it's good pain and that's it. But I got the coach, I got the, which was a big dream of mine. And little did I know in 1970, uh, no, 60, Five, I became assistant coach at Franklin High School. And it was such a dream to be an assistant. And in 69, when I got the head coach job, uh, it was like a dream come true. The happiness, yeah, that, that's, that's what it's all about to me. It, it's not just the guys themselves, and it's the attitude and the community and the people who, and I got nice calls from people in the community because of being the first Asian basketball coach, and I, I was proud, I was really proud, but and I don't think I'm the one to, you know, throw my chest out and say I'm great, no. I was proud because everything worked out, and, and in order to work out too, the goal goes back to your family too. I had two daughters and my wife, and my wife had to go through a lot too. One of, the, one of the favorite stories I got to say is Tim Gabutero played for my championship team and, and we were 
losing to Ingram in one of the playoff games, not for the championship, but the playoff game. And he didn't get to play hardly. But we were losing by 10 points with two minutes to go. And the team, the, the student body getting impatient, they're saying, no way we're going to win. So they started to go off, off the stairs, you know, ready to leave because we don't have a chance. And, and I called Tim Gabbard, I said, Tim, I want you to get the quickest hands on the team and I want you to foul. He fouled four times and they missed all four foul shots and we got the rebounds and we made eight points. And there was still 17 seconds to left yet to play. And we had the ball and then we made our, uh, in fact, we made a shot and a foul shot and we won by one. Coach came up to me after the game, and it was like winning the NBA championship. The, the coach from England came up to me and said, "What kind of rabbit foot do you have?" I said, "Hey, whether it's rabbit foot or not, I think the kids did a great job." And I don't like to talk about your luck; it's the kids that support me. And I saw some of the students, and this is the first time I watched students leaving, and I got real angry because I usually don't look up there. But two minutes ago, time out. 10 points behind and we win. And I think that was phenomenal. And, it, and I think it gives them hope and trust and faith. And, and there's a lot of things you could bring into coaching and attitude and kind of things. And sure, there's, so there were some emotional things, uh, bad attitude kids, and, but you got to deal with it. And I learned from that too.